Greetings, adventurers. Uh, I'm recording this before my next game session. I'm telling you what my plans are for that game session, and then I'm going to post it after the game, and then in the comments, uh, I'll get into what did not work as planned. So, uh, we just finished up a Ravenloft game. We're going to start game two of four. And my son has handed me, both literally and figuratively, the DM screen. So I'm taking over the DM position for the uh, final three. After that, we start a new campaign with, thankfully, lower level characters. <clears throat> but we have nine level 14 characters to try to provide a significant enough challenge for, to make it interesting. Uh, we did have one character die last one. So those who say you can't kill a character in 5e, yes you can, even if they're high level, it just takes some doing, and it's probably going to have to be a boss fight. Okay, so what I have here is a notebook. Not terribly thick, but this is three adventures for Ravenloft that I came up with. And my first section the Tables of Terror from the uh, second edition Ravenloft uh, boxed set. I'm not going to follow that entirely, but you know, this is kind of something to work off of. First section of my notebook some of the rules of Ravenloft and lingering injuries and madness and sanity points. Sanity points are from the 5e DM Guide chapter, I want to say 9, it's either 8, 9, or 10. Lingering Injuries, also in uh, Chapter 9, give or take. Anywho, <clears throat> that's in there. So, I like the white, W-I-G-H-T. It's been around since 2nd and probably, I want to say 1st edition. It is an evil person who died with unfinished business and wishes to continue doing evil. Well, that evil person could have been a high-level caster of some kind. Could have been a powerful fighter. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a s standard CR2 creature. And it's definitely not a mindless, dull, boring zombie. When people think of high-level undead, usually they think of uh, lich, or vampire, or maybe death knight. They don't think Hey, what about the white? It's a perfectly fine creature with uh, the capacity to be up level to make it interesting. Well, somebody on the internet, and I wish I could give them credit, but it was me for sure. I don't have the art skills. They drew the Disney princess Snow White as Snow White in the undead sense with sharp, pointy teeth. Cool. So I took that as my inspiration. Uh, that, that, that's 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 something. So the sharp pointy teeth. That's telling me devourer of flesh. Now in 1999, there was a movie called Ravenous. It was set in 1840s California, starring David Arquette in a supporting role. Uh, Guy Pierce, I believe, was the main uh, the main actor. It had a a weird, unique soundtrack, and it was a uh, it was the trailer did not do it justice. I think the trailer hurt its box office because the trailer said, "Oh, look, it's a dark comedy." No, it was more period piece horror. Underrated. Anywho, Ravenous. I'll get back to that. So, we, we, we end game one with the characters wounded. Some of them on the brink of death. One of them being dead. He's being replaced. The new character is uh, already... I had the discussion with the player. He's like, hey, can I do this? Well, uh, no, let's, let's not do that. Let's do... Here's some other options. And he snagged onto an option. He seems happy with it. 
which is good. I'm happy with it. I don't think it really is a problem. Cool. He's, he's, he's rolling that up. He's writing it up as we speak. Cool. So, I thought, okay, Snow White, Ravenous, Cannibalism, uh, that's, your, that's your horror thing. Okay, cool. So I wrote this thing up. And it is, basically, it's chapter two of this book. Uh, part one. You arrive in a forested Ravenloft domain, describe dark forest with spooky sounds of wind and unknown small birds and small animals. That, that's what I'm going to go on. That's my note. I'm going to go into a little more detail when I'm at the table. <clears throat> Hopefully. Uh, you find the top half of a scroll. That's my initial notes. I don't think I want to go with this. Um, in my initial notes, I have wanted for multiple crimes. Snow White, a woman of malevolence, cannibalism, witchcraft, and murder. She is known by the following rhyme. Her hair is black of ebony, her skin as white as snow. And that's torn. I don't think I want to have that be the first thing that the PCs find. Because that just, that throws, that throws most of my cards down. Like, at the get-go. We want to hold our, our hand close to our chest. I don't think we'll do that. <clears throat> uh, part two. Wandering through the forest, you briefly hear the banjo and squeeze box music from the Ravenous soundtrack uh, song Boyd's Journey. It had a, this, this thing had a unique soundtrack, this, this Ravenous movie. <coughs> uh, starts off with, ban with this one song, starts off with banjo. Ting, 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 it's a little creepy and a little, like, lo is that low talent? You know, just some dudes around a campfire trying to make music kind of thing? You know. Uh, the brief music ceases as the uh, wind changes direction. So I'm going to have, what I'm going to have is I'm just going to describe the wind changes direction you hear 20 seconds of. Hey, God, right, play that thing off the, set, off the laptop. All right, cool. You know, you have 20 seconds run, kill it. All right, cool. You know, and you're setting this mood of, there's somebody out there in this forest and it ain't you. And it might not be good. Uh, next, next encounter is just going to be a peasant couple. Just a couple of peasants. They're, they're sad. One of them has been, one of those has been crying. There's a little jingle of coin as they pass. They bid you good day and carry on. They do not appear to wish to talk to you. They just want to just go on their business. If you uh, bother them and ask them questions and this, that, and the other, they might be persuaded to tell their story. Uh, they're broke. They can't afford to feed their children. The mining camp uh, needs extra labor for uh, just camp maintenance. Uh, do the laundry and do the cleaning and do this and that. The miner tasks around the campsite while the miners work. So they sold their children into uh, indentured servitude. Hey, it was a thing in some parts of history. Uh, the truth is, the children, that's not what really happened here in Ravenloft. That's what the peasants believed. Hey, we sold our children into work. And uh, strangely enough, there's not a lot of workers around that camp. <clears throat> Night falls. You make camp. You make camp in the hunting spot of a stealth predator. So they will have to do a uh, they'll have to do investigation or perception or they will be attacked. Okay, so here we have a combat encounter. And like most encounters, there are at least two of three options available. Talk? No. Uh, avoid? Yes. You can't avoid this creature by detecting it and knowing in advance where it is and how to avoid it. And three, fight. Fight is almost always on the table with most creatures. 
It may be a bad choice, but it's always a choice. Maybe an easy choice. Who knows? Also hunting on a different night shift, guard shift, I assume, because you're all going to put up guards, is a uh, hunting predator. It's going to be large. It's going to be scary. You will have the option of being, as the only guard on shift, waking everybody up, making noise, alerting the creature, fight ensues. You can attack the creature, fight ensues. You can try to wave hello and talk to it. That may or may not be the best option. We'll see. You can just try to be quiet and hope it doesn't notice your campsite. Here we are going to use stealth rolls versus perception. Okay, so now we have two potential combats before 24 hours have passed for the PCs who were wounded from a previous fight. The next day, they already have wanted for multiple crimes. Yeah, this should not be the first clue they find. Uh, I'm going to have to change my notes. Possible encounter of the investigative type. You find the remains of a human adventurer hanging by his ankle from a rope trap, dangling from a tree. His leather armor is torn to shreds, sliced apart, sliced and torn. His body has been stripped of flesh, and his bones have humanoid... Uh, no mark, no marks on them. He's been attacked by some form of animal. His gear has been scattered, but an empty quiver and scabbard indicate that he had been armed. His backpack has been scattered about and his rations devoured by scavengers. So I might have some crows and vultures around. Separate parchment among his gear reads, and maybe this is where part one could come in, but I might have part two instead. <clears throat> Take this apple and these manacles. Feeding her this apple should render her into a slumber, during which she should be able to be enchained. Neatly cut. Remaining is a locked metal box. PCs are going to open it. It's locked. They'll pick the lock. They'll open it. It is not an apple. It is a still beating heart that's been filled with holy wafers and then sealed with a mending cantrip. That is a perfect trap if you're trying to ensnare a ghoul. Somehow I, I don't know if I want to have that one as, as I don't know. We'll see first, second, I don't know. Next encounter, there's a rustling in the bushes to the party's left. They find nothing but booted footprints. I'll allow, the PCs are gonna investigate it, try to track and it heads off into roughly the direction they're traveling. And they're gonna they're gonna immediately how big are the boot prints? How many? Now, uh, I'll give them a number, a smallish number, and it'll be about the same size and shape as the cleric's boot prints. He's a dwarf. So you you see where I'm heading with this. And if I lay out the clues in the order I'm laying them out, it's gonna be really blatantly obvious, like too obvious. I, mean, I need to switch this up. Next, outside of her lair, a human corpse lays at the bottom of a 20-foot pit. It has been recently torn to bits. The corpse, not the pit. A piece of parchment, the bottom half of a scroll is visible. A 30-foot ladder is hidden nearby. Corpse has a torn apart explorer's pack, ruined leather armor, and a set of manacles. Bottom half of scroll. Command of creatures foul and fey, summoned from far below. Her lust for blood and flesh from bone makes her a fearsome foe. Beware her song, the sound of which is sure to bring you woe. For part one and part two of this, we've described Snow White, evil magic, and bad stuff, and possibly singing Banshee-ish. But if we put this one up, all we know is bad Banshee-ish. Thing. And then they're like, oh, it's Snow White, you son of a gun. So I'm thinking maybe this is a better order for these two. <clears throat> the battle. Okay, so. When we had 
when we had five level eight characters, uh, we fought a lich or a packed lich from Kobold. Uh, the Pact Lich being from Kobold Press, it is a Lich, but it's a Warlock rather than a Wizard. And two Lich Hounds. We were level 8, mind you. This is a, uh, this is a level 14 party, 9 strong. So, we're going to bump this up. We're going to have a few extra Lich Hounds. The Pact Lich is a Warlock. It's CR 15. Um... Innate spellcasting, things like banishment, bestow curse, compulsion, confusion, hellish rebuke. But this is this this really kind of feels like it should work. Regional effects. Roads within 20 miles of the lair became strangely maze-like and confusing. Creatures must survive, succeed a DC 18 survival check while traveling or become lost in the area. That is lost in the spooky woods. Perfect. This monster is perfect for this. Scrying at all other divination spells within a mile of the lair. Fail unless the caster succeeds on a DC 16 arcana check. Again, you're lost and you can't tell, ask for magical help. Lair actions. Black lightning from above. Cool. Typical zap zaps, whatever. Lair action. All creatures within 30 feet of the pack lich magically and randomly swap places. In addition, all of the creatures, including the Lich, look and sound like one of the creatures that was affected. Creatures with true sight can see through this illusion. On a nation of count 20 on the next round, the illusion fades. But the translocated creatures are not returned to their original places. This is kind of, kind of a lot like the mechanic that my son used with his bad guy, where he just swept the table of minis, threw a handful of dice, and all the minis were rearranged. That was not covered with an illusion, and that was the entire board, which within 30 feet of the bad guy, yeah, roughly. But we could all see where we were. This you can't. It's related, but different. Um, yeah, this works. This works. So, Pact Lich, Kobold Press. Good monster for uh, this sort of big bad evil guy or gal. The Lich Hound. We fought these. We were level 8. This is a level 14 party, so yeah, they should be fine. They sort of got a long rest, right? Okay. Instead of a hound, I'm just going to reskin it as being ghoulish dwarves whose mouths go all the way to their ears and are filled with shark like teeth. You know, scary ghoul dwarves. Anyway, uh, medium undead, neutral evil. Uh, hit points are a little high for a CR. I mean, it's CR4, 120 hit points, 119 ish. Okay. Ethereal Jaunt. As a bonus action, the Lich Hound can magically shift from the material plane to the ethereal. I'm going to switch that out for, as a bonus action, instead of going ethereal, uh, disengage and use remaining uh, movement to uh, back off. So we have this kind of more pack tactics looking thing without giving them pack tactics. Or, as a bonus action, tear into any adjacent prone creature for 3d12 slashing damage of feasting upon the prone. Yikes! That is scary. Because, well, that's just if you're prone. Well, the melee attack of bite is d12 plus 4, ouch, and strength save or be knocked prone. Now, if you're getting you're getting attacked by two or three of these, good chance of one or two of those bites hits, and you have to make one or two strength saves at a DC 14 or be knocked prone, there's a good chance somebody's going down to that and getting bitten and getting chewed up. This is, this is damage. This is just raw damage being pounded on people. 
Um, or as an action, a howl, 100 foot radius, DC 14 wisdom save, or frightened for five rounds. Scary spooky howls, causing fear. We have fear effects, people being knocked prone, people being switched around, and people being bitten up. And the Lich is also casting a, a handful of spells. I might swap out some of those spells for something a little more Banshee-ish, something a little more uh, singing-ish. But I think we got a good plan going in. This is, uh, this is quite easily going to be two sessions. And... Yeah, it might be wrapped up in a single session, I doubt it. In order to make this only a single session, they will have had to have avoided both of the campsite fights. Anyway, so that's what my planning looks like. And it looks like I'm good to go for two sessions worth. One little binder. Good to go. Name Kurt, out.